right? This is a factoring completely problem. So this one looks a lot like a quadratic. It's a plus b squared minus 3 times a plus b minus 10. I chose this one because it, it looks different than what you're used to. So I hope this one is like right at the next level of stuff that you should be able to do. A little bit harder maybe than stuff you've done, but also um, something you could do. So I think a nice way to think about this is to sort of replace this a plus b with an x. And that'll turn it into something that's really familiar to you. So we're gonna we're just gonna do it this simple trick. We're gonna say x is some number, I don't know what it is. I don't know what a or b are either, but x is gonna be a plus b. And now let's rewrite this. If we've defined that, then this is just x squared minus 3x minus 10. And that, I suspect, is something we can factor because we've all been practicing our factoring every day, right? I suspect that's something we can factor. So the general way you do that again is you take this last number, the constant, and you write down all the factorizations of it. You take this first number, well, which is x squared, and you write down all its factorizations. And then you write a couple parentheses. And this is, this is again for factoring quadratics. This is something squared minus a linear term minus a constant. This is how you can factor them. You take these factors and they go first and second. In our case, there's only two, so they have to be the ones we choose. And then these ones, we have to find the correct combination to put here and here. And the correct combination deals with this number here in the middle. We've got a negative 10, so one of these factors is negative and one of them is positive. So either 1 is negative and 10 is positive, or 10 is negative and 1 is positive, or 2 is negative and 5 is positive, or 2 is positive and negative, or 5 is negative. Which pairing gives a sum equal to negative 3? That's the, that's the overarching question when you're determining which pair of factors to use. And the answer is obviously 2 with negative 5. So we're going to have a plus 2 and a negative 5. Okay, factoring quadratics, I hope, hope, hope we're really good at. That's, a, that's supposed to be a smiley face. I hope we're really good at that by now. So this is like it's like a giveaway question. I could I will tell you right now factoring quadratics will be on the test. <laughs> so I hope we're okay with that. Um, so this process you should be good at is what I'm saying. All right. So the next thing for this problem after we found this factorization with x is to just replace x with what we defined it as. So what's our final thing here? We've got x, which is a plus b, plus 2 times x, which is a plus b, minus 5. And that's it. So this is called a substitution trick. Questions on this one? We still there? How many people are still in the room? 18. Okay, we've picked up a few. Good. All right, I'll move on. Um, are these questions too easy? I'm not hearing much from people, so I guess I'm... I don't mind doing math in front of people, but it'd be great if there was more people doing math. Maybe you are. I don't know. I just can't hear a thing. So perform the operations and simplify. I specifically chose this question 
because I I've I know that people have asked me questions about this type of thing before. So, what do we do first? We've got a compound fraction, and on top, we've got a difference of fractions. So what do we do? That's great. That is great. We will multiply by the reciprocal on top and bottom. And that has the effect of canceling out this denominator. So we get just 1 over x minus 1 over 2 times 1 over x minus 2. Great. So that gets rid of the compound fraction. But we still haven't performed all the operations. So the next thing we need to do is do that is find that difference. How do we do that? Do you find the L C D? Yep. Like one over X just multiply it by two and the other one by X. Right, we find the L C D, the least common denominator. So we don't know what X is, so we don't know how it factors. So we're gonna have to just take two times X to be the L C D. So we do that by changing both fractions in this way. We multiply the left fraction by 2 over 2, the right fraction by x over x. That way both fractions have the denominator 2x. Okay, so we've got 2 over 2x. minus x over 2x. So we can combine them into one fraction now. We take the top minus the top, all divided by the, the bottom 2x. Okay. And then we're multiplying that by 1 over x minus 2. All right, we are so close. What's next? Can we simplify this at all? How would you do it? Yes, yeah. I've got a hint here. 2 minus x is, is kind of the thing we're going to work with. Ah, find the common denominator again. No, we, we don't have a sum or difference of fractions now. We've got a product of fractions. Right, so this is this is 2 minus x. We, we could write this out. This is fine. 2 minus x times 2x, or sorry, divided by 2x times x minus 2. So we can combine this just by multiplying the fractions together. That doesn't require common denominators. For any two fractions multiplied together, any two fractions, it's just one fraction, which results from multiplying the numerators and dividing by the product of the denominators. Right, so that's this. Can we cancel out any of these factors? That's my, that's the, the leading question now. Can't you cancel out x? No. We've got we've got a difference here in the middle. If that was a product, we could. But we can't because that's a difference. If if this two had a two x on it, if it if it looked like this up top, if both terms had a factor of x, then we could cancel out that x. 
okay, if both terms had it, but they don't, right? The two doesn't have a factor of x, so we can't cancel that out. Um, I could give you just a real quick like, here, two minus x over x. Let's let's like pick a number real quick. Uh, let's plug in one. Two minus one over one. What do we get? We get one over one. That's one. Okay. If we cancel out the x, it would cancel for a one, right? And we would still get two minus one, which is one. So like it seems to work out. It seems to check out. However, let's pick a number that's not one and see what happens. So here's here's the canceled form that we were suggested. Two minus one over one. That's the canceling. That's always equal to one. But if I pick two, let, let's pick a different number too. Let's do three. We're gonna plug in three now for x. Is this equal to one? No. It's negative one over three. Right, so this difference messes everything up. We can't cancel out this x like that. If we do, then the fraction is always equal to one, no matter what we plug in for x. But what I've just shown here on the right is, if we plug in anything other than one, really, <laughs> we do not get one. We get different numbers. This fraction is not always one. So I see the chat is blowing up. They want me to go faster here, I suspect. So um, yeah, we're, we're gonna cancel out that two minus x and the x minus two because they're opposites of each other. Two minus x is equal to the opposite of x minus two. So we can throw a negative sign here in front, write this like this, I hope that's okay. I, I commuted the x and the negative two. You can do that with addition. And then if, if you distribute this negative sign, you get the original thing back as well. So this is canceling with that, because they're the same. You get negative one over two x. Very good. So this this is simple. Why is it simple? Because if I gave you a number x at the beginning and I said compute this, what would you have to do? Step one, subtract two. Step two, you'd find one over the number x. Step three, you would take this from two and you would subtract one half. Step four, <laughs> you, would, you, would, you would take the result from number three and you would divide it by the result from number one. That's a lot of stuff. Okay, here, this is simple. If I give you any number x over here, what do you do? First, you multiply it by two. Second, you take negative one and you divide it by the result from number one. Okay, two steps, done. Two steps. Twice as many steps over here. <laughs> this is quite simple on the right. Quite simple. Questions on this one? Okay. We'll go ahead and we'll move along. We'll clear the page. 